Yo, what's good, everybody? And this week's episode is brought to you guys by Skillshare. Guys, you know that Skillshare are our amazing partners. They are a one of a kind online learning community where you can learn all types of amazing creative entrepreneurial and design skills. If you have not and got on Skillshare, go ahead and sign up for Skillshare immediately, guys. They have so many amazing courses like the Finding Your Purpose course. And as always, if you wanna build up more skills, I highly advise you guys hop on the video editing. I don't know how many times I need to say it. Go to Skillshare.com slash some roommates and get yourself Skillshare for free. Yes, guys, I've said it so many times. It is free. You do not have to pay any money. There's no excuse to not level up financially, not level up creatively. So go to Skillshare.com slash some roommates Thank us later, and let's get to this week's episode. This week on the Roommates Podcast. Because that's what we've been taught about men. That's what we've been taught to be as women. We're supposed to be submissive, and it's like if a man's acting how we've been taught, we're supposed to act as women, we're like, he's soft. Mm -hmm. But why, though? That That's because of the gender roles and what we've done as a society. So it's like it literally just feeds into each other like a circle. Yeah. So it's like we have to stop it somewhere where it's like, you know what? It's okay if my woman's so a little are bit you more ready, independent. Are you ready to date an emotional, more feminine style man? Um, that doesn't make any money. That probably can't protect you. That you probably I, don't. I did. <laughs> oh, you did. did, 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 did. I did. did. But why didn't it work? Oof. We're really getting into it now. <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing here? What are we doing here? Yo, what's good, everybody? It's Hafiz. Chris, the star of the show, baby. Yes, yes, yes. Welcome back. Welcome back. We are in the lovely Southern California. How does it feel to be back, Chris? I love it. I, I, I would want to live here if money wasn't the issue. Really? You would live here? May, have you walked outside today? I have a family here. You have a family. Okay, life. you know what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of crazy right <laughs> here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Am I, am I, what about saying like in the future? Nah, I couldn't do it. Okay. It's just too much. That looks too much. Yeah. It's that lifestyle. People are weird. We ain't got to talk about that. <laughs> cool, about cool. It. So, you know, whenever we come out to L.A., we always get all these fun, amazing guests. And this guest, mm. I'm really excited about this guest because I found this guest on YouTube. Yes. And it, and it was the energy for me. <laughs> like, the energy. <laughs> this guest is super dope and awesome, and I'm really excited to bring you guys our newest roommate. So, guys, please welcome to the show the one, the only Tati Coakley. Hey, y'all. <laughs> I'm excited. What up? What up? Did I get it right? Yes, you did. Yes. Good, it's good. Yes. Because, you know, yes. feed sometimes, you know what I mean? He he beginning it up. I'm proud He's like 80% from the field. It's not bad, but he can do a little bit better. Yeah. I mean, I'm proud of you. It sounded right. It sounded right, or was it right? They sounded right for now. Okay. <laughs> so, Tati, so we know who you are. So, for the people who don't know who you are, can you give us a bit of an elevator pitch synopsis and all that good stuff? So, my name is Tati Coakley. I'm a YouTuber. I also do Instagram and things like that, TikTok. But basically, what the bulk of my brand and my channel is about like self love, women's empowerment. We talk about dating, relationships, everything in between, why men ain't ish sometimes Lord. you know what i mean we're gonna get into that today but yeah it's just a safe space for women to come have conversation little girl chat all that fun stuff okay okay and what started the youtube channel what made you want to do it so oddly enough i don't know what energy i just put off but on instagram people just started hitting me up like maybe two years ago about how can i love myself how do i get over my ex stuff like that so i just started repeating myself giving the same advice all day every day on like dms I was like, you know, I feel like it would make more sense if I just made a YouTube channel, made a video, and they could all just refer to that. Mm. And then it just blew up because there was nothing there for that. Like, especially in a woman of color, nobody was talking about it. Like, you have to think about it as a young woman. You're looking these things up. How do I love myself? How do I build my self-worth? And there's no content there. So then when I started, it just kind of took off. And now we have this huge family of, like, a safe space for them to come to. So, yeah, that's basically what happened. Yeah, that's dope. To me, that's interesting because I... I would I would suspect that a space like that is like already 
um, saturated. And mm-hmm. so to me, like when you're saying like, okay, there wasn't really a large community of women because all we see is self love. Right. <laughs> all we see is that. All so it's right. kind of interesting that you say like you didn't see like you felt like you had to meet that need. Yeah, there really wasn't. I mean, now everybody's like a girl chat. Everybody's a self love empowerment life coach. Yeah. But like two or three years ago, it was an empty space, especially for women of color. There was yeah. no safe space for women of color to come and understand how to grow up as a black girl in society, how to grow up and love yourself as a black girl in a white man's society yeah. there's nothing there not everybody in their mom is a girl chat talker but at this point like there was nothing there so i'm glad that we entered when we did so yeah. that i could grab the young girls when they're in their adolescence when they're growing up when it's like the perfect time for them to really figure out like how do i do this how do i move in this world it's a perfect time now i'm glad it's everybody in their mama you know like everybody is represented in some way they could find somebody online somewhere that they could feel like okay that's me like yeah. i see myself in her you know where's your family from my family's from Jersey, you know, yeah, North I, I, Jersey. I, I, I heard, yeah, it, I heard it. I heard it. I heard it. <laughs> first of all, my family's from Jersey, North, not South, first oh, of all. Okay. Is that a big thing, I guess, on the East? Oh, that's okay. a huge thing. Okay. We don't claim the South. Dang. Okay. You know, I mean, no hate to New- South is, Jersey. Is but there a reason? It's just not the same. Like, you have to think, North Jersey is very similar to New York. We're right outside of New York. Okay, that's what you're trying to do. South Jersey is York. not that. No, you're not New York. No. Right? First of all, <laughs> New York's trying to be us. Whoa! First of all, I know I'm going to shake the table with that one. <laughs> but no. New York is trying to be New Jersey? Listen. <laughs> listen. We damn sure not trying to be no New York. It's beef. It's a little bit of beef. Oh, but that's man. it. Yeah. But that's it. That's where I'm from. Dope, dope, dope. So, you know what? One of the reasons why I really was excited about bringing you on is because we have like a, a large male audience, and a lot of these guys are like young, like 18, 24. So, I think it's like a very similar demographic, but the female version obviously right. would be yours. And so, they're always like asking us questions about like understanding like young women today. Mm. And so, I was like, yo, like, at a certain age, I'm aging out of that right. <laughs> right. generation. You know right. what I mean? Right. So right. I don't, I don't know. So I said, wouldn't the perfect person to bring on to talk about this? Oh yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> go ahead. I'm ready We're to go. Have a nice conversation. So Tati, tell us, please. Mm-hmm. What do young women want today? Now, see, we can't ask a broad question <laughs> like that. Listen, you got to start broad, and then you swim back to the shallow waters. Like a young woman that wants a relationship. In general, what do you get? What do young women today want out of life? Most, I would say, a good chunk of us want. First of all, screw men. Most of us want okay. career stability, success, education, etc. Mm-hmm. But if we're talking romantically, a lot of women just want commitment and honesty, and y'all cannot seem to give us that much. I'm confused. <laughs> I'm confused. We're not asking for a lot. And you know what's funny? Like I feel like men be trying to be like, oh, women want the world. They want a Birkin. They want a this. They want a that. No, they don't. No, they don't. They want commitment. They want honesty. They want loyalty. The rest is whatever. When you want commitment, and you want honesty, and you want loyalty from yes. the guy that you want. Because you can get that from guys that you may just, yeah, just, no, nah, he's not good enough. But why settle? Mm-mm-mm-mm. I agree. You, right? you gotta have standards. Because y'all gonna have the same standards. Y'all want a girl where she wanna be thick. She gotta be this. She gotta be that. She want what her own business, her own job. She gotta be educated. Y'all have all the standards in the world. But let a woman say she want a man to be six foot. And now we're trash. Make that make sense. Who said that? Who's y'all? Listen. That's y'all's community. <laughs> okay, Who listen, said that? listen. Oh, she really, we're, we're, there's a lot we're going to unpack. Yes. Let's <laughs> unpack this. <laughs> so, do you want to start with the general point about what women want today? Or do you want to start with that question you asked me? I'm curious. I mean, the general point is going to open that door. The general point is that women just want commitment, honesty, and loyalty. Okay. Which many of y'all cannot seem to provide. Okay. So. <laughs> You asked two questions. <laughs> you, you asked the commitment, honesty, and loyalty part, and then you asked the six foot part. So, which one do you want to begin with, ladies hmm. first? Let's start light. Let's talk about being six feet. Okay. So, out of curiosity, is that is that your requirement? No, my okay. ex boyfriend was like five nine. Okay. How was mm-hmm. that for you? It was fine because I was in love. Aww. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. 
disgusting but <laughs> but <laughs> it wasn't my requirement but some women yeah like i'm like five seven five eight so it's okay for me yeah. but some women might be like five eleven might be like i can't do somebody under six yeah. feet they so, want to feel girly so my question is if you're let's say there was a girl who's five foot two mm-hmm. and she wants a guy who's six feet how do you how like how would you like console a woman like that i have a friend like that yeah and I told her that's dumb because I feel like you got to leave the tall men for the tall women. Like, that's being <laughs> selfish. Like, at the end of the day, if a man is 5'6 and you're 5'2, he's tall to you. Yeah. Like, you don't need a foot taller. But at the end of the day, she can have whatever preference she wants. Yeah. You get one life. Yeah. I mean, shoot. <laughs> You want you want to go first? No, 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 no. Nah, nah, you got it. I'm just curious. I'm gonna play back up. Don't be nervous, Chris. Come on, hit me with something. I'm not nervous. I'm curious of what's about to happen because I want to know where you're gonna go. Oh, hit me with something. I'm ready. So, so to me, I, I, I'm similar to you. Mm-hmm. I believe you can ask for whatever you want to ask for in life. I'm not the person that shames anybody because I'm picky myself. Chris Period. is picky himself. Period. Francis is very picky as well. Oh, Period. So, yes. So, to, <laughs> so to me, I'm never going to shame somebody for what you want out of life. Right. But one thing that I have learned from years of failure <laughs> in my early 20s with women, <laughs> many years of failure is that you can ask for what you want, but it's does who you want want you mm. and that's where it got tricky because i while i had a very high standard the women who i desired also had a high standard Facts. which i didn't fit until Period. later on in life and so for me it's like if a woman saying she wants a guy who's six feet i'm like yo it's your life only live once enjoy what you want but that's only 15 percent of the population right. those are the guys that all the girls want so they're they're like if they're like fifteen percent, they're probably gonna want a girl who's the equivalent of that, like a really top notch chick as well. Mm-hmm. And so to me, that's where it gets a little tricky when a woman wants a very particular guy who's like a very high status guy, but she may not be his female equivalent. The same way I was a man who had a very desired a very high caliber of woman for sure but i wasn't the male equivalent so what is the equivalent to you if i say a man has to be six feet what is the equivalent a girl has to be what that's a great question so to me (laughs) i i feel as though this is this is just my personal thing i think it's a beauty component Mm. i think i think height and beauty is very similar um on a on a on a biological thing because even though I do agree that like faces is still faces. Like women will always want a handsome face, mm-hmm. but I feel like a woman would rather prefer my personal opinion. I'm curious what you would think mm-hmm. an above average looking guy who is like six three, six four, versus a really good looking five foot eight guy. A hundred percent. So that's why I would put height with beauty. So if you're if you're like a, a rare guy is a guy who's over six foot. So then the female equivalent would be like a very beautiful woman. And so that's how my brain thinks about it. But mm-hmm. to challenge that, okay, height is measurable. Beauty is not. That's a great point. So mm-hmm. how can we make that equal? Because it's like to you, this girl might be pretty to him. He'd be like, she's mid. She's all right. But like I could tell how tall y'all are. I could measure that. So what's a measurable thing for a woman that's like, okay, that's equal. No, that's great. And to me, height still is measurable. So for example, how tall am I? I mean, I don't know. I could figure out though if somebody got a measuring tape. <laughs> that's the point. Like, so it's still an eye test, right? Right. So there's still some guys where it's like you don't know if he's six foot. He could be five, ten and a half. He could be six sure. one. So it's but generally speaking, you can be like, oh, he's tall. Same way with women. I think it's like yeah obviously you're right there's like there's differences in beauty he might like a certain kind i might like a certain kind mm-hmm. but then there's some girls we all look at and like oh yeah she's beautiful you know oh yeah she's very mm-hmm. attractive it's just like you can feel yeah, it there's no denying that. yeah and so to me i think when women describe t- like over six feet they're really describing a guy where you don't deny he's a tall guy yeah. like For it's just sure. straight up he's just a tall guy and that's attractive to me so i think the the male and what men do is like okay straight up she's a really attractive woman but i feel like Everybody does this. Like, I feel like off rip, all you go off is what you can see. So, mm-hmm. like, I could see your height. You yeah. can see if I'm attractive or not. Yeah. So, I don't think it's wrong for women to say, like, I want a tall man. I understand what you're saying with, like, if you're going to have standards, you need to also match them. Mm-hmm. But it's like, mm, maybe she thinks she's the baddest bitch ever. Yeah. Maybe she thinks she does match it. Mm-hmm. Who's going to really measure that? The guy. 
<laughs> the tall guy. I guess, but what yeah. if you're tall and not attractive? Well, then she doesn't want him, right? No, no, she that's still not true. A lot of unattractive people are tall, like men, but like they will get women anyway because they're tall. Like because, because that, it I, I would argue out. that's attractive though. So yeah. I think while that's why I think women are a little bit different than men because I feel like from my experience. This, uh, like if you if the attraction was a dish it'd be a gumbo right it's all right. these different mm-hmm. things that that add to it right and so whereas men it would be like pizza chicken like one thing that makes right. her attractive to him right and so i would say that like the height is what makes him really attractive and the money and the status yeah not for me but i know oh, okay. in general, <laughs> i mean i don't care never for me. <laughs> not for me let me clarify it's but not for, me. <laughs> not for me i'm just saying for women i feel like y'all have it easier because women have to be attractive y'all don't you could be a two out of ten but be rich and now you're gonna pull some of the most attractive women, women ever say so men have it easier when it comes to like standards and off of first look she really what? Said that. She, what? She, so what she must be around certain kind of guys she's not around the everyday oh no y'all are crazy guy. y'all are crazy women have to look top notch to get y'all's attention y'all could just have money you could be in a strip club <laughs> that's so cap that is not cap you we, can have if you have a big names. booty you get all kinds of attention but do we need to name names if we no if you if you talk about guys that have status and money yes 100 percent. but if i can go down the street and see a girl that has a big booty she would have all access to the guys but it might not be the guys that she wants. But that's what I'm saying. If you have money as a man, you're going to get the women that you want. Yeah, but you make it seem like it's just easy to have yeah, money. Yeah, like what? It's what not, but y'all either can get some height or y'all can get some money. Which you can't just do? get height. You can't buy height. <laughs> I mean, then you better get some money. Like, it's, it's going to be one simple. or the other. Well, okay, what's the dollar amount to money you think it is? It depends on a girl. Well, just give me something. Like, for me, something. right? For me, right? To work with. If I'm dealing with a, a guy, I want to deal with a man that's at least making as much as me. That's just a personal thing. Like, <laughs> okay, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm curious. I'm curious, B. You don't, you don't got to make a billion, gajillion more than me. <laughs> but <laughs> you got to be on wait, the level. You have a billion dollars. <laughs> but, <laughs> but you yeah. should at least be making as if much If somebody money. wants to talk to you and date you, what is that number? Oh, just six figures. Just, just, just. But here's 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 where I would argue this point. Mm. Let's hear it. So first thing is, do you think it's easier to make six figures or it's easier to be beautiful? Totally feel you on that. It is easier to be beautiful. Okay. Second point is that I feel as though I would argue that your standards are less about your... You, how can I say this? Your standards are less about your money and mm-hmm. more about your beauty. I think if you made mm-hmm. forty thousand dollars and worked for Chick Fil A, you can still ask for whatever you ask for, no matter how much money you make. Oh, for sure. Yeah. So I think you're the kind of woman who's so attractive enough that you your beauty has opened the doors to there's the men that you want, whether it's a height, whether it's a status, whether it's a look, they will desire you. Yeah. You know but I, I mean? wouldn't feel like that was justified. That's just me. I would feel like I feel justified in saying I want a man to make six figures because I do. Yeah. I wouldn't yeah. say because I'm pretty and make 40K, I should be able to have a man that makes 6K. I don't think that's justified. I don't know if it really matters if it's justified or not. I think it's just an honest fact but that guys look at beauty and see that and they want that. They don't care if you work at Chick-fil-A or not. But that's dumb. Like, that's but, but, here, but here's the thing. You got to think about it like this. So it's like. I've always said you have to ask why is this important, right? Right. So, like, why is money important? Money is important for women because money provides protection. Mm-hmm. It provides stability. It provides a well-being for her children. A lifestyle. So, yeah. So, women yeah. aren't just, like, money hungry. They view money as resources, right? For sure. My kids can go to college. My kids can live in this neighborhood. They can go to these schools. So, it has, like, advantages to that. As a guy, especially a masculine guy, I'm already thinking my job is to protect and provide. Right. So because that's my job already, I'm not looking at what can she bring in the financial sector right. because I'm already bringing that to the family. Right. So I think that's where men value the beauty component because the beauty component, for in all honesty, is a health component, right? Mm-hmm. So it's like a person who is like in really good shape, you know, they're a healthy individual and they're probably going to give you healthier children, wider hips, easier for mm-hmm. childbirth, things like that. So I think the beauty component is deeper than we think it's shallow. But when you like really understand people, it's like it's really like a health thing. Like people look healthier. 
You know what I mean? When you're in your best shape, you know, when your face is symmetrical, these are just things that just communicate healthier. So I think as a guy, if I want to have children, I want a woman who's going to give me the healthiest children. And that's how my brain processes it. So that's why I think for guys, it's a bit different. We could look at this two ways. Okay. We could look at it the way you're talking about. Like scientifically, yes, naturally pheromones and things like that. Naturally, men are going to be attracted to women with the wider hips and like the more womanly, shapely body just mm -hmm. because about childbearing and things like that. Scientifically, that's just what you're going to be more attracted to. Same as women. We're going to be attracted to the bigger, stronger men mm -hmm. scientifically. Now, let's say if we take that out of the picture. <laughs> let's look at it misogyny wise oh wow i feel as though <laughs> we oh. took a turn <laughs> we're gonna take a big Whoa. turn okay go ahead because i feel like we can't just knock it off to that like oh yeah i just want the woman that you know like would provide me you know the healthier kids y'all not look thinking about that at all when you look at a woman and especially now in society and it's always been this way women are supposed to sit there and look pretty and y'all are supposed to protect and provide therefore you can't really get mad at women when they're looking for a provider because that's what they've been like taught. To I'm not do. mad. Nobody says no I'm just mad. not taught. Oh, just guys in general. In general like yeah, yeah, society yeah. wise, it's like, oh, women are gold diggers and da 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 da. I don't think so because yeah. I feel like if y'all are going to pick, you know, the trophy wife, the one that's going to look pretty and this is and that, she should find her provider. I don't think she's wrong for that. I don't think she's wrong for that no, either. No, she just got to that's make sure great. she can get that guy. You think she needs to be bad enough to get the guys what you're saying? I think that she just has the qualifications to mm. get on that guy's radar. What are the qualifications, Chris? That could be beauty. Mm -hmm. That could be the way you, you shape. Could be booty. Could, it, it, booty will help. <laughs> <laughs> it will help. All those things will help. You know, the energy, the joyfulness, the kindness, right. the nurturing spirit. All those things will help in, those, in that uh, scenario. But I feel like some women... Like they paint themselves as, as this. You're going to take this, and I want that guy to accept that as well. But when most guys, they're not going to accept that. They might not accept the, I don't want to offend nobody, but you know, the independent, you know, mm -hmm. I'll get my bag. He, 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 my dog, he going to sit down and listen. Mm -hmm. type mm -hmm. He's not going to accept that. Why though? Let's because there's other that. women there are not going, that are providing that nurturing spirit that he could just, you know. But why can't you be nurturing? Why can't you have both? A but, woman could be nurturing and still say I'm independent. I don't really need you for real. Yeah, but is he seeing that initially? I mean, is so, he? I don't know. Can you see that from anybody initially? Why is nurturing <laughs> synonymous with being dependent on a man? Oh, I don't think I don't. I, I you see, <laughs> see, you're going to extremes here. <laughs> That's so, what I'm getting so, from so, this so, conversation. So to here. me, see? it's not. I don't think he's saying that nurturing is synonymous with being dependent because no one's saying. No one's preaching unhealthy dependency, right? Yeah, right? Like so to me, I've always said it's like healthy interdependency. I can exist by myself, you can exist by yourself, but we need each other and we desire one another, right? Okay. But to me, what I've noticed is that sometimes the radical independence makes you so so me focused. Mm -hmm. where you become so consumed with taking care of me that you lack the ability to be empathetic and meet my needs as well exactly. for both people. Crazy so, bubble. Yeah. So even, and the reality is a lot of these things that I think some of the, some men are describing they struggle with are things that women have this described struggling with. Cause when you think about like going back to old movies about the really successful independent guy, right. he was not emotionally available. Right. He was not there. He neglected her. He really was only focused on himself and his career. Right. He, like, you know, the kids wanted to go to the baseball game. He was leaving them outside, waiting on the porch, like stuff like that. That was from Liar Liar. Yeah. And so to me, I think that's where for men, because I don't want to make it just like, oh, that's bad for women. No, for mm -hmm. men as well, like this level of healthy interdependency that I feel like is important that you do, that you should display. But I don't think, I'm not saying y'all too. Mm -hmm. I don't think y'all's community is comfortable. Who is y'all's community? I'm going to just say y'all's <laughs> community of men over there. I don't think y'all are comfortable. That side. Y'all are on that side today. Y'all are not that comfortable with interdependency. And that, let's be honest. A man, like even today, I'll hear so many men be like, like, oh, women are becoming men now and da 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 and they're they're treating us like we treat them. Y'all don't want that. Y'all don't want interdependency. Y'all want to feel a little bit of like submissiveness. Not that your woman is completely bowing down to you in this, but you do want to feel like she needs you a little bit. Like that's what y'all want. So that interdependency, like we're equal, we need each oh, wow. other. I don't see it. I feel like a lot of y'all want to be like a little bit more needed so you could feel like I don't think a man. I don't think it's 
more needed. I think naturally when a woman really desires a man, she naturally puts him that way. So if you're like, if you think back to your ex, ex relationship and mm -hmm. you're like, I was in love with this guy, right? Mm -hmm. You, you had a lot going on. Like I, I saw your videos when For you sure. were dating him, but there probably was still a level where like, oh my gosh, he's my man. He's a great guy. And 100%. I really put a lot of time and energy into this guy. So I think it's like men understand that there's a natural energy that women give it's, when, it's the admire like yeah. i want her to uh, admire me like look up to me not like i'm looking down on her like you gonna do See? as i say but it's admire i have a question for you real quick hmm. if you could only have one mm -hmm. you could be loved by your man he loves you dearly mm -hmm. but doesn't respect you or he respects you like none other but he does not love you if you had to pick one or the other which one would you pick and why? Okay, that's a challenge because I feel like if you love someone naturally, you would respect them. I understand. That's why I gave you the scenario. So we can't split them though. So like, let's say, for example, there may be a guy who loves his wife. He does everything for her. He's always caring for her, always there for her, mm -hmm. but he doesn't respect her the way he respects his friends. He thinks of her okay. as a little bit lesser because she's his wife versus a guy who views somebody like his boss. I really respect this man. Like he's, mm -hmm. yo, he's a millionaire. He's this, but I don't love him at all. If he was about to fall off a cliff, I'll just watch him die. Like I was a god dang scar. You know what I mean? Right, like, right. So there's a sense of. Don't live. <laughs> 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 so, so to me is like, so if you were to pick one or the other, which one would you pick and why? Love. Okay. Why? I can be respected from anybody. You okay. know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. if someone's willing to like die for me at that level of love, I would much rather prefer that than someone who just thinks so highly of me. Yeah. A lot of people could think highly of me. Okay. I would pick that, but I wouldn't pick one. I would rather die. I know. I understand. Pick one or the other pick one. one. Chris, which no. one are you picking? Yeah, man. Respect. Respect is huge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She has to respect me. See, see how women and men are just differently and, wired. And, and that's what that's I'm, what and I'm so saying. when you, so there's a great book called Love and Respect. I tell people to read it all the time. New York Times bestselling book. And it talks about that. Like, the, like obviously there's a d bunch of different women. Not every woman's going to pick love. Some Facts. of them are going to pick respect. But for the most part, most women will pick love. Most men will pick respect. So when you said like men want you to kind of like be submissive and kind of like look up to them and that. That's where I think the respect kicks in. Right. Because when you respect somebody, you look up to them like that. And you naturally have a more submissive. I know it's a, a cuss word nowadays, yeah. but <laughs> a more of a submissive energy. And so I think women would rather prefer knowing that their man would die for them and love them with all their heart. So they don't require that kind of gaze in which a man really desires, you know, that woman to really respect them in that sense. But I don't know why we can't have both. You can. You can. That's what I'm saying. But like, no, nothing is perfect, though. That's the problem, though. Like, things, I feel like, as much as we can say, like, yes, it's just nature, and we just want to be respected, and this, this, and that, things are still based in, like, gender roles and misogyny. That's why things are the way they are. Y'all want to feel, like, the provider. Y'all want to feel big and strong and respected. Like, but that comes from a long line of, yes, we can talk about science, and this, this, and that. I'm a psych major, I know. But past that, that comes from a long line of gender roles and society, like, pushes them to make y'all feel like you have to be that that's why we are more emotional that's probably why we do pick love over respect because we don't have to be that we're allowed to cry we're allowed to be soft we're allowed to not be a provider and protector and this is and that mm -hmm. so we're always going to pick love because we don't care about respect so my question to you is you don't feel like men feel that way be feel what feel way? like you said society makes men feel like they can't cry they can't Facts. be emotional they can't they mm -hmm. have to fit this general as you say you don't feel like men feel that way from experiences, not just from society, but from women, because in oh. actuality, women respond way better when you have more of this traditionally masculine presence versus a, a more emotional feminine presence. But why, though? You have to ask why. Okay. Like, if we look at history, that's why. Because that's what we've been taught about men. That's what we've been taught to be as women. We're supposed to be submissive. And it's like, if a man's acting how we've been taught, we're supposed to act as women. We're like, he's soft. Mm -hmm. But why, though? That That's because of the gender roles and what we've done as a society. So it's like, it literally just feeds into each other like a circle. Yeah. So it's like, we have to stop it somewhere. Where it's like, you know what? It's okay if my woman's so a little are bit you more ready, independent. Are you ready to date an emotional, more feminine style man? Um, that doesn't make any money. That probably can't protect you. That you probably I, don't. I was. did. <laughs> oh, you did. did, 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 did. I did. did. But why didn't it work? 
oof, we're really getting into it now. <laughs> what are we doing here? <laughs> what are we doing here? <laughs> oof, we're getting into it. Um, okay, so that's that's what I was gonna say to you if we're gonna talk about that. In the same way that you guys were talking about like independent women who got this is not don't need a man, like it's gonna be hard for her to be more empathetic and da 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 da. I am that and I was that. Like I was the one making the money and this, this and that. But I was also extremely like empathetic and admiring him and like doing everything I could to make his life better. Like I was still submissive in that sense, but I was still like, Don't get it twisted though, I don't really need you and you know that. Like whoa, you know whoa, whoa, what I'm saying? Wait, wait, no, 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 I don't know what you're saying. Did you tell him that? No, that's oh. just the energy. No, that's just the energy. <laughs> That's just the no, 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 no. I'm not disrespecting like that. But you know, that's the energy. Like, you know that though. You know, like it's like if you were to ask him, I'm sure he wouldn't say that was a lie. Like the energy was like, I'm not gonna sit here and beg you to stay here with me, but at the end of the day, I'm going to make your time here with me the most enjoyable possible. I'm gonna elevate you as much as I can. So I don't think it's true that like an independent woman can also be but empathetic and this and that. Let's stop. Why did it end? That's my question. Okay. It, let me be introspective here with this. Okay, go ahead. We're here. I feel as though Mm -hmm. it didn't work because I was somewhere he was not ready to be. That's me being completely honest. Break that down for us. We don't don't know what that means. Breaking that down. You were somewhere that he wasn't ready to be. Where were you at? At a different point in my life. Like, I'm focused on my career. I'm focused on investing stocks this and that like i'm at a different point in my life where different things are important to me Mm -hmm. he was not there he's figuring himself out he's Mm -hmm. college he's trying to have fun those aren't gonna add up eventually Mm -hmm. it's not that he oh i don't know he i can't speak for him whether or not he could handle that i was independent i'm sure that didn't help the situation Mm -hmm. but i don't think it worked because he wasn't independent and that's just me being honest. Like, if yeah. I'm going to be an independent woman and going after myself and this is not, you also have to be that. Because then you can't depend on me to depend on you because I won't. Mm. And then you're going to feel small. Yeah. And I think that's where the issue started coming in. I don't, And that's why I wouldn't do that again. So that's why when you ask if I had like, oh, what's the number and this is not, I wouldn't date someone who is not at least on my level now because I see what happens when you don't. So my question was, who cut the cord? Be honest with us, because we already know the answer. We already know the answer. No, you actually don't. Okay, go ahead. Teach us. So. Watch how she makes up a story in her head. <laughs> no, it's just like. The wheels are turning. I'm trying to, because it was like a mutual thing. Like, I, I, have a mu- I have a follow-up question. Go ahead, answer. go ahead. Okay, so I cut the cord initially. Like, okay, but like, listen. That was, <laughs> That was initially, that was initially, that was initially. I did it first, like, a couple days before it really, really ended. And then we kind of, like, talked our way into being, like, let's figure this out. Mm -hmm. And then he was like, we're not going to figure this out. And I was like, okay. (laughs) And that was that. So, technically him. Did your attraction for him kind of go downwards as this time goes by, as you kept getting that data? Like, you know, this guy is not on my level. He's not doing the things that he's supposed to be doing. Did your attraction kind of (laughs) just... I think uh. my respect started going this way because as a woman, I don't want to feel like I have to have more fire under your ass to like be ambitious about your life than you do. So it was like my respect for you as a man, as we're talking about the, the providing, the protecting, this and that, my respect was kind of dwindling because it's like, all right, when we're going to get it together, like I shouldn't have to keep being like, come on, come on, come on, come on. But it wasn't attraction because I was in love with this person. So I'm mm-hmm. like, I'm looking at, I was dating potential. And that's where the problem is. And that's what I talk about all the time on my channel. Like, dating potential is what women do. Y'all never do that. Y'all go off of what you see right in front of you. This yeah. is what she is. I'm going to date this if I want this. Women are like, well, maybe I could make him this. Maybe I could fix him. Or he might be able to be this. And that's why we're never satisfied. And we end up with men that we feel like aren't on our level either emotionally, mentally, financially, whatever it is. And I did it. Yeah. And so, know what's really funny? Since we're being honest, is it gonna be funny? It's gonna be funny to me. <laughs> not sure. <laughs> when I when I met you, mm-hmm. not met you like when I met you digitally, mm-hmm. I was counting down the minutes. Oh my god! I prob- <laughs> and this, and I, I don't know why I'm saying this on the camera. <laughs> I was trying to tell you this off camera. <laughs> oh my god! But I was counting down the minutes till it was over. Why? What because did you I, see? I saw that. Mm. I saw it every, like. On this channel, one of the things for your audience who may not be aware, we constantly stress 
men improving themselves all the time. So we're not the challenges bashing women. Women are. Duh, 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 duh. I'm like, yo, do women have flaws? A hundred thousand percent. We sure. can talk about them for days, but we got flaws too. Right. And for for men, I complain. But complain once you got your stuff in order. Then right. you can complain, right? right. If, when you got your money right, when you got your body in shape, when you got your emotional health, when you got your spirituality, Period. then you can complain. Yep. But until that day, I don't want to hear no complaining for nobody. Right. So I'm constantly teaching men to improve themselves. And so guys are always sending me messages, emails about their issues and struggles, and you see similarities, you see patterns. So many guys are in situations with women such as yourself, mm -hmm. where the younger guys and because they get a really attractive woman, they think they won yeah. mm -hmm. and they settle. They're like, oh my gosh, I won. I'm just happy I got this girl. And what happens is the girl doesn't view no disrespect to him as the win. Right. She views the win as the bag, the career, this, that, and the third. But so, yeah, so she's doing so many other things in her life to improve it. And he's not really keeping up that fire. Right. So then eventually you come to a point of time because natural, I, you say society, I think it's biology. We can argue chicken or egg, but it is what it is right. where we are right. now. So it gets to a point where that woman's like, I'm not happy in a situation where I'm the one killing it. I'm the one wanting more. I'm the one being independent. I'm the one taking care of us financially. I'm the one doing this. And you're not putting the same energy is one thing that he's not there yet right. but if he was putting that same energy as you you can be like yo i can exactly. respect that but when he's not putting that same energy oh no 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 i've seen it happen yes. too many times so when i was seeing your dynamic i saw you as somebody who was going after it and no disrespect to him there's no dirty man right, 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 right. i i didn't see that right. so i was curious i was like yo like I've seen this story happen before, mm -hmm. you know, and then, you know, next thing I know, new video by Tati, my breakup story. <laughs> I'm like, oh, so everybody wants to know what happened. <laughs> I didn't want to do it. <laughs> but you are going to do it. So, oh my God. Oh okay. my God. Okay. Okay. So here we go. <laughs> All right. Okay. So you're not wrong. No, for sure. But. We were dating when we were teenagers. You know what I mean? I understand. So it's like when you first date, I was like, oh, we're like equal. We're a good match. You know, you date for her like because you like somebody. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, we work out. We love talking to each other, whatever. Then as you grow up, it's like, mm -hmm. all right, year two, year three, year four. It's like, what are we working towards? Mm -hmm. Like, I don't really see progression. And yeah. it's like, it's been four years. What has changed on your end? Like, you see all this stuff that has changed on my end. I'm trying to get you to that point so I can't really like drag someone up with me. Like you have to want to do it. So I think that's where a lot of the conflict came. That's what I'm saying. Like if I were to say who really pulled the cord, it would be him. Cause honestly, when you're like, like me as a woman, when I was in love with him, I'm like, if he would have been like, okay, I'm gonna get it together. My dumb ass probably would have been like, okay. And waited it out. Yeah. But I think he got to a point where he was like, I know I'm not going to get it together enough for you and dipped it. I was like, mm. the fact that you had accountability to know that you're not ready for this. I appreciate it. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. after I would have wished you would have figured that out four years ago. <laughs> but I yeah. mean, at one point you have to realize I'm not ready for a woman like this. And yeah. at the end of the day, I think that's what a lot of people don't do. Yeah. It's like the conflicts that was happening in the relationship and the arguments and this and that are stemming from the fact that I want you to get your ish together. You know what I mean? 100%. And it's like, how long can we do this? We're going to just argue the relationship into the ground because you're still not getting your ish together. So it's like, that's the flip side where I think as a man, y'all don't, like if you were dating a woman that doesn't have her stuff together, y'all wouldn't be pressed about it. Like it wouldn't be like, all right, come on, like let's do something. If she's going to sit there and look pretty, that's enough. You know what I mean? or cook or do this this and that that's enough for y'all but for a woman it's not and i yeah. don't want to feel like i'm somebody's boyfriend that's where i think the problem was coming and listen to what she just said fellas mm -hmm. i don't want to feel like i'm somebody's boy i think they caught that that's crazy <laughs> boyfriend and and that's the part where i just this is why i believe i believe it's not just biological i believe it's like a spiritual thing yeah, i sure. believe it's a masculine and feminine thing it's a mm -hmm. dance some people and, and and this is not a sexuality because you know gay people are unique where there's two guys and they still have a masculine feminine lesbian the same way so it's not a it's not a gender like thing but it's some people prefer to be led while they're salsa dancing some people prefer to lead during salsa dancing so 
There's some women and who, if they're going out salsa dancing, they will not be happy if they have to lead the entire night. For exactly. sure. They will not be happy. If there's a guy there and they're having to lead the entire night, they're miserable. For sure. You know, and then there's some guys who, if they're going out salsa dancing, they they would never be happy if the woman <laughs> is leading them in a dance right. the entire night. So it's a masculine feminine. So you, you know, being the femininity and dating and all that stuff, you would naturally yearn for a more masculine style man mm -hmm. who's ambitious, who's driven, who's independent, who's, you know, going after what he wants to, you know, who's successful, who's stable. Those things will be attractive to you. Right. And so to me, going back to your initial point about societal culturing, I think that's where men understand that. A certain caliber of woman, going back to what I said, when I, I didn't get my first girlfriend until I was 28 years old. And one of the things that I struggled with the most was understanding masculine energy. Mm -hmm. right. Because for my whole life, I was like, I, am, I, have a, I look good facially, I have a great body, and I'm kind. Why don't girls want me? Right. But I didn't understand that. I was evaluating myself the way I evaluate women. Yep. But then mm -hmm. I realized, oh, there are other things that women desire yes. in a man that I have to work on. Yes. So when I started working on those things, obviously the results changed. And so to me, that's why I always tell guys, you like that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was nice. It was sort of, it was sort of, it was obviously, stuff changed. Yeah, but and so that's why for me, I, I keep on telling guys, like, you have to see that if you want this caliber of woman, you have to be this man. Yep. So that's why it kind of goes full circle to your first point. It's like, yeah, you're right. Even if you're a woman, if you're a woman who wants this six foot, I call it the three, six mafia guys, six foot, six figures, six pack abs. If you, if you want that, he probably has a certain things that he wants in femininity and beauty and fitness and cooperation, stuff like that. So it's, it's, I don't demonize any gender for what they want. Right. But I will say, if you're a man, understand what women want and improve yourself as a man and women vice versa. Exactly. But I think it goes deeper than just like your whole 3 6 Mafia reference. Okay. I think women also want something different from the norm. Like we're used to emotionally unavailable men, we're used to emotionally immature men. It's a breath of fresh air when a man can evaluate himself and you in a conversation or in an argument. And he's like, I don't feel like dealing with this shit right now. Like someone else who's like, OK, why are you upset right now? What? Women would be like, let me tell you why I'm upset. You know, I'm not even upset no more. Like, wait, hold on. I'm confused. Yeah, I'm, I'm not. You talk really fast sometimes. OK, slow that down. One Listen, time. OK, so a woman is like, we're used to the men that are emotionally unavailable because of that masculine energy, right? So okay, because of okay. the, like, I'm not going to go back and forth with a girl about some stupid shit, like, whatever. Mm. Like, I'm a man, you're going to listen to what I said. I did what I did, right? Sometimes that's cute. Like, if it's something dumb, it's cute to be like, we're not about to argue. A girl mm. be like, okay, we're not. But if she's really upset about something, it's nice when a man has some sort of emotional intelligence to be like, why are you upset right now, babe? Yeah. Mm. Y'all lack that. A lot of y'all don't do that. Go ahead. When you have certain guys that has been gifted, especially these six feet, six figure, six pack abs guys, especially the guys that was popular in high school, popular in college because they joined fraternity, all these different things, mm -hmm. they get the rewards without doing the work. Mm -hmm. So they right. don't have to put the emotional work in. They don't have to put the maturity in. They don't have to put their their bank account in order, all those different things because they're getting an abundance of women. Right. Since they get an abundance of women, they don't feel the need or they don't feel like they have to put that work in. Right. So when you meet those guys that most dang near all women <laughs> want. Okay. The one percent guy. Okay. You all gonna run into those guys that have not emotionally matured. Yeah. That have For sure. been, you know, had that self awareness, that evaluation in those areas because they didn't have to. They yeah. got the cake and eat it too without baking that mug. But just because you don't... <laughs> you like that, bro? I like that. <laughs> you like that, bro? Yeah, good. I tried my best, bro. I've been, I've been, I've been in my pen and shit. Okay. <laughs> but just because you don't have to do something, does that mean that you as a man don't want to do it? Like, internally? Like, I feel like... I think they'll get there maybe eventually. When you're 40? Or when they have a kid. I see somebody have a kid and change their life. I'm serious. Sometimes. Sometimes. You ask me if. I just gave you a scenario. But if we're talking about that one percenters, like the, mm -hmm. the rich, this, this, and that, I'm not sure if the kid is going to change how they emotionally deal with women. I, I'm just saying. It could. I have seen no. a brother change his life. Because he and I, For sure. And yeah. I think sometimes it's kind of like, it's like, how can I put this? It's like asking somebody who's 
parents spoiled them yes mm-hmm. to be now very humble yes right it's like whenever you're used to like an abundancy of stuff male or female so for example oh, I'm, I'm from atlanta women understand if i look a certain way and I have a certain body i don't need anything else i can get male attention i can sure. get male attention Over- male money male whatever i don't have to be kind Yes. Like there's no incentive for being kind. A lot of times we learn kindness from reciprocity, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm kind to Tati, Tati's kind to me, I'm kind to Chris, Chris is kind to me. So you learn that in order to get kindness, I have to give kindness. Right. Some people don't learn that lesson. Some sure. people learn that I can do whatever I want and you will still be kind to me. If not, another girl will be there. Yeah. If she won't, and for sure. And then some women learn that as well. Some women learn that I don't got to be respectful to you, man. I don't got to right. text you back. I don't got to. I got a big booty. You. I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. But that loops back to my point about that being our fault in society. 100%. 100%. That's why I think we need to stop that shit. I feel like we need to put some sort of change in that because nothing will ever change. Y'all will never feel like you need to be emotionally intelligent y'all you keep saying yeah. y'all y'all's, group, y'all's, y'all's members, mm. members y'all's members no no no, 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 no not our members that's y'all's group the, uh, no no that's our group, group she's is, not getting it our group <laughs> is the guys who do the physical emotional spiritual financial work to become better men that's hmm. our group the other group mm. those other guys maybe them over there they never over, heard of us. over here <laughs> our guys are not it. like that so do you think you're the majority no, no, of course no, not. No, we know Great. that. That's okay. why we yes. have a need for so, it. So men in general don't feel like they need to do that work according to y'all's thing. So therefore, I feel like we need to switch how we speak about each other and switch how we move in relationships in order for there to be some order like difference. Like no one's going to change. Nobody's going to feel like as a man, let me just start doing emotional work. If they keep doing what you're saying, if, if girls keep throwing ourselves at them because they got money, they're not going to do anything different. So I'm not saying women are above the problem. We are 100% a part of this problem as well. But so are y'all. Because at the end of the day, think about like even OnlyFans and stuff. Girls are doing that because they know that they can profit because y'all men are easily scammed like that. Yeah. Like at the end of the day, she could post a picture of her feet and you just paid $20 to see it because you're horny. Y'all are easily men are easily <laughs> yeah. easily driven like yeah. y'all are, this this it's like okay we know sex for y'all is everything so at the end of the day if i po- say oh yeah i got some sexy pictures da 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 could probably get 20 dollars out of this man to the left probably. that's men's fault so it's like w- women are not going to bring more to the table men are not going to bring more to the table unless we both do some work we, and, yeah we understand that and that's why our chi- yeah that's why our yeah. channel is here you know we get that we see that it's a very very big need for men to step up in all kinds of ways they have to do that internal healing and work to get to where they want to be in life not just money but also what's inside as well but we also understand that you know i feel like women don't give themselves the best chance of dating elaborate let me elaborate on that let me elaborate on that so to me, because like I said, I think if we talk about the the most, the majority of what women want in a man mm-hmm. is that guy that's in the top one percent. Right. 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 Every day near all wants that same guy. Mm-hmm. And like I said, when we talk about the qualifications, a lot of women don't want to do that. They want to be known for their independence, their career, the money, their ambitious spirit, all those different things. But if we look at what the one percent guy desires in a woman. You all don't want to be seen as the, you know, the looks, the femininity, the, all those different things. Y'all don't want to be viewed as that. So if we feel like, hey, if we, if we could tell women, hey, you can have those spirits, independence, the, the ambitious, but also work on the other things. You will give yourself a better chance of grabbing one of those guys. But most women just want to be known as one thing. Like, this is this is who I am. This is, who I, this is how I'm acting. This is what I'm going to do. This is what you're going to have to accept. I and know those that's not true. Are, Okay. <laughs> I feel like it's not. I it's feel like women true. do both. Women can be like, for example, for example, for example. I feel like women could do both, but and I don't they think do. They, I don't. I don't know. I Look don't at know. Sierra. Sierra is an independent woman. Nobody is like Sierra's Russell Wilson's wife. That's Sierra first, but then she goes home and she is empathetic and this, this, and that. You see online with her and Russell. She's still like you can tell she's still submissive to him at home. But at the end of the day, 
everyone is looking at Sierra as Sierra. She don't bring him everywhere. She still posts her little twerking videos and this, this, and that. Oh, Lord. Women do both. Like we can be. I think, but you you comparing a entertainer and celebrity, and you in those that same energy that she has. She, those regular women, not trying to offend anybody, that's making a hundred thousand. That's not on Sierra level. Mm-hmm. Want that Russell Wilson guy as well. But they not willing right. to put the w- other work in to get that Russell Wilson guy. They feel like they just deserve it. What is the other work you're speaking of? The nurturing feminine spirit. What does that 1% guy want? If that 1% guy wants looks, then yes, you might have to look a certain way to get them. But women will complain to us because they come to us as well talk about, why can't I get this guy? Well, this guy may not be attracted to you. Well, I feel like that's not fair. Well, I'm sorry, but that's how life is. <laughs> like, what you want me to do? These guys come to me talking about they can't get a certain women. How, I ask how much money they make. Well, you know, I make thirty thousand. I live with my mom. Well, what do you expect? Right. Yeah. But when we say this nurturing feminine spirit, let's be specific. Okay. Because I think if we're talking about this one percent of men that you know are just doing so well, they're just rich, they're living their life, whatever, whatever. They don't want a super like I'm independent. I don't need a man, girl. Right. What do we mean when we say nurturing feminine spirit? Because I don't think those men want to be nurtured and they want to deal with, you know, a nice little submissive woman. I think we're talking about sex. Let's bring that to the table. Because men, like, if we're talking about these one percenters, right? And we're talking about, oh, we want the most attractive girl. Like, a man at that level can be like, okay, he can have a certain level of standard for beauty in his woman, right? Yeah. We're going past the face now. We're talking about body as well. We can see that. That's a sexually driven thing. I don't think they're like craving to be nurtured by some woman. Well, I would. Hmm. I think sometimes you have to ask, like, what do you mean by nurturing, right? So that's what I'm asking. Cool. Okay. So, so to me, it's like this: Why do men love their mothers so much? Being nurtured. For yeah, sure. it's. I think there's a natural feminine presence that men are just addicted to. For sure. Some people would even argue that. To strip clubs is sometimes mm-hmm. less about the aesthetic and more about the experience where sure. some of the strippers who make the most money, they're usually not the ones who have the best bodies, mm-hmm. but the ones that know how to flirt, be right. friendly, make you feel like a million dollars, make you feel like she loves you. Mm-hmm. And just that energy, like you used to spend money. <laughs> I remember one time, mm-hmm. you know, I was, I was at a, not a strip club, but I was at like a regular club. And a <laughs> no, that was just <laughs> I was at a regular club, and she's like, "Hey, baby, you guys good?" You and and, yeah, and, 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 and I was just like, "Wow, Whoa. how much money?" It's like, "Wait, like, wow, with this poppy?" Yes. Because women don't even do that nowadays. Yeah. So that that I'm telling you, that energy. What women are we talking about? Oh my God. Point them to- out. <laughs> Point them out. What women are we talking about that are not even checking that their man is good? No, 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 no not. No. Oh. But here's, okay. here's what happens. How can I break this down for you? <laughs> if she feels as though this man is someone that she respects mm-hmm. and she desires, then for a lot of women, whether she's the most ratchet, most hood girl, you see them get very feminine, for sure. very sweet. But it's like you have to be a certain caliber of man to unlock that. Exactly. So mm-hmm. if a regular guy is just trying to talk to her off rip, she's not given that kind of energy to m- majority of men. It's only a certain caliber of men who gets that energy. I'm not mad at that. So what happens is sometimes, you know, especially when you date older women, they've been through so much with men that they, they're so guarded mm-hmm. and they lose that energy because they view that energy as weakness. Mm-hmm. A lot of mm-hmm. women view, that's why I love your channel, Embracing Femininity, because so many women view femininity as weakness because, oh, the man's going to take advantage of me or now I'm going to be a pushover. So now I don't want to be like that and I want to be strong. So they end up being what I described, the douchebag who hurt them. They end up mm-hmm. exhibiting all these traits of the guy that they never even liked when they were dating. Sure. And so I think what happens is a lot of women, especially once they get hurting from relationships, then all of a sudden that femininity becomes perceived as weakness and they stop tapping into it and stop embracing it. Is it perceived as weakness or is it weakness? Because it's not. It's not. For us, I had no. This conversation the other day. Factually, it's not. But I think who's perceiving it as weakness? Because a lot of times when women do give men the whole nurturing, femininity, this, this, and that, it gets taken advantage of. They get cheated on. 
They they think the man, a lot of men at that point be like, okay, this, this bitch isn't loving me. Like, I could do whatever I want to do. And then they take advantage of her being so vulnerable and being there all the time, being available for whatever you need. And then they go dip off with a girl that don't need him. So it's like, is it perceived as weakness or is it taken for weakness by men a lot of the time? So women feel like, okay, we need to switch how we're approaching y'all. Because clearly, when I'm everything and more for you, you take advantage of it. You want to go dip off with a girl that's giving you nothing but sex. Um, you were going to say something? I have something. I, I have something in my head, but I'm curious what you're going to go. So I have two what I want to say is, here's a true statement. Cheaters cheat no matter what. For sure. If you treat a man like shit, you think he's not going to cheat on you? No. He's going to cheat. For sure. If you treat a man great and he's a cheater, he's going to cheat. So I think sometimes what hurts me about women is that if something is good and it makes you happy, it's not that you being feminine was wrong. Maybe it was a choice of man that was wrong. Exactly. The so right. You know what I mean? I'm not yes. saying this is a correct mindset. Yeah, yeah, I'm I, just saying I can see how if a woman has been like the super feminine nurturing thing over and over again and keep getting cheated on over and over again, they may not evaluate the type of men that they're choosing instead of evaluate what keeps happening to them. Yeah. So then they're like, okay, I keep getting cheated on. Let me change what I'm doing because obviously we know the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again. So they're like, okay, let me start acting like y'all and then maybe i'll get a different outcome you so won't. i think you get a worse outcome for sure yeah but i think psychologically as women sometimes we're not processing that like we're processing what's being done to us instead of processing how does this keep happening to me and that's where you hear men say women are acting like men now yes yeah and that's what i'm saying you have this this vicious circle going around where you have these men that probably is trying to take this woman seriously but she's moving like a man and he's like, I don't want nothing to deal with that. I can tell she still got some hurt in her past. Mm-hmm. She hasn't healed from this. So I'm going to move on. You know, so that's that's what we're saying. It could be something. Obviously, we know the men got to get better. Right. Men cannot cheat, right. cannot do the those women. Always, all the time. Sometimes women need to get their evaluation in order. Like, let me see what kind of man he truly is before you give him all your energy. Because if you if we create these men of marriages, we're going to get into men divorces. And don't mean divorces create hardened women and that's why so many women are single today yeah and i also think to your point um now we can even talk about some of the men stuff that we deal with a lot of men go through this as well mm-hmm. especially right. a lot of nice guys oh right oh, trust so me, a lot of nice guys that get taken advantage of and the surprising thing that you're going to realize is you'd be surprised not not to not to flip the, the script on you on your situation because i want to address what you do address how many guys get cheated on Oh, I know. Because what happens is you're a woman who has the character to just pull the cord. Right. Yeah. A lot of girls will stay, but know what's going to happen? They're going to fly to Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. He's going to be in Philly or North Jersey, whatever he's at. Mm-hmm. And he can be doing his thing, being lazy, playing Call of Duty. Then you're going to fly to LA and meet a Chris. Right. Who's ambitious? <laughs> who's driven? Yeah, yeah. Goddamn right. <laughs> who's, who's, who's confident? Oh god. You're gonna meet a guy like that. Come here, girl. And then you'd be like, damn. I ain't never felt this before. Trust that's, me. That's I, I got the, this kind of guy in LA and I got this. That bullshit. Right. The next thing you know, you know, hanging out more and more with Chris, bada bing, bada boom, boom, boom. Now, I know how to use right. my words. <laughs> and so <laughs> <laughs> right. and so and so then that's what happens, right? And so to me. A lot of guys will be like, okay, I was kind, I was I was faithful, I was this, and then women treated me like that. But these guys over there, they cheating, they mm-hmm. calling them bitches and hoes, they doing whatever they want, and they got a whole bunch of women. Why I got to be kind? So on that same note, I tell guys, that's not the answer either. Exactly. Right. The answer isn't either, okay, I'm going to do the things I know is the right thing to do. No, really evaluate, okay, what was wrong? Mm-hmm. Maybe what was wrong was one, obviously you chose the wrong girl. She left Period. you that quickly yeah, and cheated correct. on you. Yeah. But second of all, maybe you weren't being in your masculine. Because mm-hmm. if you're not in your masculine, if you're not leading that way, when you're a man who's leading, your girl don't want to go nowhere. Mm-mm. Oh, no. She don't want to, because nowhere, there's nowhere better to go. Right. There's nowhere to go. But when you're a man and she literally sees, oh, wow, all these other guys are killing it and you ain't doing nothing. Mm-hmm. It's one thing that you're not there yet. It's another thing when you're not doing anything anything right so to me i always hold guys accountable to that's why you as men have to constantly be improving yourself like we say physically financially but also emotionally and spiritually because 
when the more and more you become a better man, especially tapping into your masculinity, mm. it only benefits you in all aspects of your, of life. But like from the beginning, I don't let no man complain about anything, whether it's women, whether it's life, if they aren't putting the work, energy, and effort themselves. In both areas, like yeah. in their finances, in their career, and internally. Because I think as women, how we were talking about before, that like women are dating potential a lot of the times. We'll take a man that don't have his ish together, but like loves me to death. Like if it seems like he loves me or he gives me affection and this is not, we'll take it and we'll wait it out until it's like, okay, he'll get it together. That's us dating that potential again. Until it gets to a point where it's like, I don't think you're going to get it together. Mm -hmm. That's where I think I see women dip off and start cheating and this, this, and that. But to your point, that all loops back around again to the whole societal issue of like, okay, women might be more attracted to the man that got all the girls on him and all the money and the strippers and this, this, and that. Because that makes you seem like more of a man than my man at home that might be, I don't know, watching TV or knitting or something. Like, you're doing <laughs> some feminine shit. <laughs> That's a turn off. <laughs> That's a turn off. Like, yeah. women are going to naturally be attracted to the guy that all the other women want. Yes. In the same way that y'all are attracted to the woman that every other man wants. I disagree with that. Yeah, we disagree with that. Men? Are you kidding me? Look, let me tell you. I was a teacher. Let me tell you a story. <laughs> I was a teacher. And in the seventh grade classroom, and I never forget this day, I, I was in first period. I showed a, a black history documentary mm -hmm. and John Legend was on it. King. Thank you. So John Legend <laughs> was on it. Not a single girl said anything about John Legend. They didn't say anything about him. They didn't, they didn't say anything. Second period. John Legend comes on. A girl. It's like, is that John Legend? Another girl was like, Who's John Legend? Mm -hmm. And she was like, oh, yes, yeah, John Legend. He's a he's a famous singer. Oh, he fine. He fine, too. They, everyone thought he was fine. <laughs> I'm like, okay, so was he fine or was he fine because you guys thought he was right. all fine? But when it was a guy, we watched another video, and I think Skylar Diggins was on this video. <laughs> Every guy thought she was fine. They didn't have to wait for the other guy to say she was fine. So I think sometimes right. it's like with men, because it's more physical, it's like we all see it. Some people might have different types. Like some people like skinny, some people like short, some people like tall, but we all see it. But for women, I think it's like if another woman desires him, you always ask, why does he want him? Oh, she wants him because he's confident, because he's successful, because he's ambitious. So that creates that more curiosity to where as guys, I think to an extent, like, Yes, there is always that weird rapper incest that they do. We're all going after the mm -hmm. same girl. Yeah. But I think generally speaking, I think it's like... It's completely different. Yeah. I, I think, think it's an ego thing, though. Like, I've had this conversation with a couple of my guy friends where it's like... It's not that you all don't How see it. How old are these guy friends? <laughs> it depends. Like 24, 25. Okay, little young okay, bucks. Little okay. young bucks. Young bucks. <laughs> <laughs> little young bucks. But yeah, I mean, young bucks. It's, you're still men. Like, these... It's like an ego thing in the sense of, no, you don't need the next man to say she's attractive before you saying, yes, I can see that she's attractive. But if like a bunch of men want the girl and then you can bag her, now it's the ego thing. Oh, yeah, now yeah, it's like, yeah, I got sense. the girl that everyone wants. Yeah. Even if you didn't even really want her like that. Even if like emotionally or chemistry wise, it's not really there. But as long as I can say I have the girl that everyone wants, I'm lit. I, but I think that I think. I would argue for women that would last longer than men. I think if a man was dating a girl who he wasn't that into, but everybody else wanted her, that wouldn't last for long. We can, we see it all the time. They don't marry those girls. Yeah. Oh no, these exactly. are not the wives. But yeah. regardless, you'll date them though. You'll claim them for a little bit. You might get yeah, seen around with them. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's an investment, of course. But that's two different conversations. Are we talking about? men with like actual intentions of being in relationships and long-term marriage or are we talking about just men dating around those are two different conversations about what they want intentions things like that 100 percent. because then if we're talking about men who want relationships and wives i've noticed then y'all don't want the girl that everybody else wants no, y'all want the at home little yeah. team yeah, in the yeah, corner. yeah 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 yeah, yeah. the yeah. small yeah. town girl that nobody knows about yeah, yeah. And, and to me this and you can maybe answer this question you're aware of that Yes. Why aren't more women aware of that? Because I, I keep on hearing women are always reaching out to me saying, 
all these guys want this. All these guys want that. I said, yo, you're confusing short-term attention mm. with long-term retention. Yeah, you know what I mean. So it's like in a, a bar. short, in a, yeah, it is <laughs> <laughs> a bar. <laughs> so in the in the short term, yeah, you're right. If you, you want the that kind of chick, but if I'm gonna have a family and give a person my last name, that's a whole nother job requirement. I'm 100%. asking. So, show me so, the resume. But so to me, I feel like a lot of girls they don't realize that, and so many girls are seeing the girls with the likes the followers you know the you know the temporary bags and stuff like that and they're thinking that that path is going to lead them to husband when it when it doesn't for sure i think as women we have to do a better job ladies we have to do a better job in that sense of understanding that the type of men that we want in the moment are not going to give us what we want long term that's why a lot of us do end up cheating and stuff because it's like we're picking the men that we don't really get any type of fulfillment from at all we're not even waiting to check those boxes it's like oh you got money this isn't that perfect like that's the one for me but honestly in the same sense i feel like women are having fun with those men like but when they get to their early 30s and stuff like that the they complain. do one well for sure okay. but then y'all can't complain either because i feel like y'all are having fun with the other type of women and then when y'all start getting old and ready to settle down it's like all right let me get a little ducked off girl like let me chill out with the ig girls it's cool. the same for girls so my i have a question for you who is a guy that uh -oh. you that you think just like is a very attractive man is yeah who's a guy oh this is gonna be tough. I feel like some people might be in relationships. Um, Doesn't matter. Like you're not you're not cheating on. You're, you're, I think he's an attractive guy. <laughs> I think Tiana Taylor's husband is attractive. Okay, they're Iman, just a beautiful. Yes, okay. they're a beautiful couple. Okay, cool. They are very equal in that so, sense. So I would I would argue that what when you, women usually describe a really attractive guy, mm -hmm. a lot of time is usually on the older end. Yes, because I was gonna say Idris Elba. I won't, yeah, I won't that, lie. I, I was actually waiting for that one. <laughs> I was gonna say Idris, but he just got married. Yeah, so I was exactly. like, Let me. that's why I said, hey, though no, Idris in there. So they usually describe Idris in his forties. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So because what happens is, I don't think women understand. It's the confidence. It's yes. that ambition. It's that swagger. Yeah. Yes. These are things that's really hard to be young. That financial stability. Yes. All these things that make up. Yes. 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 <laughs> yes. You know, and so. So a guy like Idris can be like, have his fun, 45, Baggy. Auntie, you know, Janiyah, Jennifer, ja -ja, whoever. Fa <laughs> uh, all the wives, come uh, yeah. he, can, he can do that, but in all due respect, for most women, that's not the case. For most women, it's mm. more challenging, you know what I mean, as you get older, as at, oh, one hundred percent. As font like J Lo at fifty looks amazing. Right. No one's denying that. But let's be honest, J Lo at twenty. <laughs> For sure. God was a person. <laughs> <All right. laughs> of course. And Plus, so, she's not like a regular situation. Yeah. Like most women are not looking like J Lo at that. Yeah. Age. And so, mm -hmm. so to me, going back to the the immediate attraction component, that's why I think for guys, it make. They're able to do that because later on, you can actually get better girls. And that's the point that I tell women all the time. They also don't realize when a lot of girls say, oh, guys are, you know, are not ready to settle down. A lot of times it's because I can't get the girl that I want. Right exactly. now. If right. you're a girl and you're 23, 24, who looks like you. You can get the guy that you want right, right now. Right now, you yeah. don't have to wait till thirty-four. So I think sometimes guys realize that, and they're trying to build themselves, especially if they're guys who are more active, trying to build themselves to get to that point where they can get the girl that they want. And that's why, in the immediate time, they're not ready to settle down. Where girls is the actual opposite. I also think it's just the science of y'all mature slower than us. No, not no, true. See, I yeah, think no, it is. No, 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 no. That's, that's just a fact. We're not, that's that's a fact. not gonna let that's you. A fact. We're not gonna do that's what you tried to do. That's a fact. That's a fact. That, no. These are these are proven facts. At the end of the day, it's a proven fact. It's not a proven it fact. is. Y'all's brains, like your frontal <laughs> cortex, just takes so long. I'm tired. I'm gonna be gray by the time y'all grow up. It's ridiculous. Like Y'all just, it's just a fact. Like, yeah. at the end of the day, a woman at 20 and a man at 20 are two completely different I, spaces. Have you? Most of the time. Let me tell you, let me tell you why I disagree with you. Okay, let's hear it. There's a really popular YouTube video that I saw that I thought mm -hmm. was really, really fascinating. 
and it was titled I Dated Women and Now I Understand Men. Okay. So you have a lot of female friends? Of course. Do you have friends who are emotional? Yes. Do you have friends that at times are difficult to deal with? Yes. Yes. Probably of some of your yes. Yeah, 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 yes. We won't say your name. <laughs> yes. And so what women don't understand is that that's your friend. Right. Imagine if you were in a romantic situation with her. Because mm-hmm. with uh, in, in romance, everything is elevated. The highs are higher, but the lows are lower. Mm-hmm. So th- what what you're dealing with ain't nothing compared to what that guy is dealing with. Mm-hmm. Not den- I'm not denying that 20-year-old boys are immature. They obviously are. Right. But if you've ever dated a 20-year-old girl... Mm. And dealt with those that Hawaiian roller coaster ride of emotions. Yes, will not deny <laughs> we are still not fun. But at the end of the day, I think that goes back to the conversation we were having earlier about how like men do take a little bit longer to figure out like okay maybe it is time for me to grow up. Maybe it is time for me to get more emotionally intelligent and things like that. Y'all wait on that stuff. A twenty year old boy is not like let me get in touch with my emotions. Let me get emotionally intelligent. Women are just quicker to be like let me figure it out. Now does that mean we're good at it? No. <laughs> See that doesn't mean we're good at it. Just I'm just saying. You know your emotions or you're in touch with doesn't make you mature. No, okay. but we're on our way. Like I think we start that uh, process. No, I honestly, I'm, no, no, I can't yes. do it. I can't do it. Yes. I can't do it. We're we're on our way. So we're both. We both have a car. Okay. Women are in the car seat. Yes. The car hasn't gone anywhere. Nowhere, nobody, nobody will go anywhere. The guy's outside the car. Ah. Okay. End of the day. We're both having gone anywhere. <laughs> yes. You, know, yes. you can be on your way. You can be aware of it. But to me, it's like, yes, I can agree that if you ask me who's reading self-love books, more women. Right. Yeah. Who's reading more books about emotions? More, more women. women. Right. But when you talk about who's actually putting the, putting the keys in the engine, turning the car on, driving the car, actually going somewhere, mm. I would argue you're not going to see a difference. Oh, you know. I thought you were about to argue for men. I no, 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 no. You're not going to see that. I'm not I would see this. It's not a difference because most, most, I would, I would really argue. That's why I loved your channel so much because I really believe, that's why I think this is fun because it's like the roommate. <laughs> you know, the roommate. roommate. And so it's like you're doing for women holistic stuff. Right. The way what we're doing for men holistically. Yeah. And so to your point where you said when you started off, there wasn't many people doing this. Mm-hmm. We were in a very similar boat. Right. When we started off, there wasn't a lot of, like you said, there's there's no views in emotional health. No. no. There's Zero. no views in that. No you know what I mean? No, no one cares. cares. We, we we know you're a YouTuber, over close to a million subscribers. You know, we're not there, but we're getting closer. Period. You know? Subscribe to <laughs> <laughs> You know? And so, so we understand what works. Right. And so I really believe that's why what you're doing is so amazing Thanks. is because you're really helping the next generation of women become better the same way that we're taking it a priority to help the next generation of men become better. Yeah, like, don't get me wrong. Women, we are not fun to deal with a lot of the times. I would never sit here and be like, we're just the greatest things ever. Y'all suck. No, we are quite emotional. Like, we run with our emotions a lot of the times. And I think as toxic as it is that you guys don't, mm-hmm it's unhealthy at the levels that I think I see women running with our emotions. Like it is just instant, I'm mad, I'm seeing red, that's it. But in the same sense, men do that in a different way. So women will see like, okay, my man did X, Y, and Z. I'm not even gonna try to look for the proof. I'm not gonna do anything. I'm pissed, I'm cussing, we're doing this. Men will do that in the sense of when they feel their ego or their pride or their masculinity being tested with another man. So that's where that hot headedness, that violence, that aggression towards other men comes. We don't do that. We do that towards y'all. Like, I don't see that in women like I do. I've never seen a woman more mad than when their man makes them mad. But I've never seen a man more mad than when another man makes him mad. A hundred percent. I would agree to that, but I would even argue I've never seen a man as mad as when his woman does that to him. Like cheating? Disrespect him. Oh, for sure. I cuz it we we've always I won't I won't say this guy's name. He may or may not be in this room. He may or may not be sitting at this table. Oof. But there may but there's this this <laughs> <laughs> I've seen people be with women who know how to take a knife. Oh yes. Just, <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> yeah. Yes. I've seen, and 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 there's there's a level I've always said. Let's put it put it on me. A woman can hurt me yes. in ways a man can't. Oh, I know. So if, if she mm, wanted to, she, she could just. Yes. Stump on them. Yeah. Yes. Can, Tiny heart. And so and so, not saying never saying this is okay. So when a man is not mature emotionally, mm-hmm. that's where the domestic violence comes in. A hundred percent. Because not saying that who I don't care who does what. Right. You should never hit nobody. No. Mm-hmm. And so if a man's not mature emotionally, he will not be able to deal with that. Because like you said, yes. when it's another guy, guys are not going to talk it out. They're not going to be bickering back yeah, and forth the way fight. women are. Right. They're yeah. going to fight. So you as a man, you can't see red. Because when you're a man and you see red and you snap, you wake up and you're in jail. Yep. Yes. You know what I mean? And so that's why we, we always emphasize that emotional work. Because as a man, you can't do that. You see, that the reality is, for most women, if she's mad at you and she swings on you, even if she connects, she she ain't doing much damage. Right. For the most part. You know, there's something right. like Amanda Nunez. Oh, she did damage to a relationship. She, she, <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. That's a good one. That's a good one, you know? And so there, there, there is a, 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 a double standard where women yeah. are allowed to be physical, but you're, but man can never. Because yes. you're, you will... Do serious damage, yeah, yeah. and when they see it, yeah. you're done. And so right, right. I agree. Uh, oh my gosh! And so that's why I agree a hundred percent that you know, as men, there is a level of maturity that you, you're, you're, you have to have emotionally that women may not have to have. Like right. you know, level headedness, you have to be level. If you see Facts. a woman cussing a guy outside. You're gonna be like, damn! What did he do? Yeah. But if you see a man outside cussing out a woman, no one's gonna ask, well, right. what did she do? No. Facts. You know, and so, uh, and so, I definitely agree to your point about like men are, but I see with men and women as well. But that's why the emotional stuff is so important that we take care of. That's why I push it because at the end of the day, as much as I want my women to do their work. I have to make sure we're protected physically, yeah. like our lives, because still one of the top reasons for women to go to the ER right now is domestic violence. Yeah. So we can't say like, I can't say that, oh, like most men are doing a decent job. They're not. They're doing a terrible job right now. This is not something that we can just push off like, oh, we both got work to do. Men really need to get their ish together. Like at the point, at the end of the day, y'all could kill us. So like when it comes to stuff like that, I think y'all need to work on it. But I would never justify a woman putting her hands on a man either, because yeah. I feel like we're no better i'm gonna say that's okay either like yeah, that's yeah, not yeah. it but i think it's different like how you were saying how a woman can hit like i've had a friend tell me that a man told her that his mom or something told him that he was a disappointment later down the line she's kept that in the back of her head months and months later they get into an argument and she's like and that's why you're a disappointment oh lord Jesus. and i was like Lord, yeah, yeah, you see, that's crazy. You took it too far, Lord, and I'm like, those Lord. are things that I see women do that oh, I never man. see men do, Yo, which man. is terrible. Yo. Like we know how to hit you Immature. where it hurts. Oh, childish! That's vicious. <laughs> that's, that's crazy. That's vicious. That's childish. Yeah. I told her that, but I think that's more of like I'm hitting a soft spot versus when a man tests you. It's like I'm hitting your pride. I'm hitting your ego, your masculinity. Like yeah. I'm testing your gangster right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Women are not testing your gangster. Women are just hurting your feelings. What I want to show the audience is obviously it's gonna be fun. You know who's who has it worse? Who has it? All these fun conversations. Right. But at the end of the day, there's a priority for. Men to become better men and women to become better women. And I don't want women to feel like there's nowhere that men go or can go to become better men. We have the roommates here. And I don't want men to feel like there's no place that women can go to be better women, which is why Tati Shot is is here. So, you know, I'm really grateful. I really appreciate your time. So my question to you is, if you're giving like a closing message Uh to, to men, Mm-hmm. who desire relationships, who desire women of your caliber. So let's say that. Mm. <laughs> what would be some advice you would give to men like that? I would say as much as men think that leading with your money, your wealth, your status is what's going to do it, mm. that might catch someone's eye. Okay. I won't lie. But that's not going to hold us there because it's too many men of status. So what's going to hold me 
or a woman of my status or caliber or whatever it is, is you being something beyond that? Is you being emotionally intelligent? You being loyal? You being committed? You knowing what you want in a woman and expressing that, expressing boundaries. Things like that, your emotional level of maturity is what's going to keep a woman that is like me past your car and your money and this, this, and that. Honestly, and y'all know, if, if, we're, if there's a woman that looks like me or this, this, and that, there's a million of y'all. We can find another one at the end of the day. Trust me, you can't. <laughs> not y'all, not y'all, not y'all. Like, you know what I mean. Like, I was like, good luck. You know I was like, I mean. point them out, point them <laughs> out. Not y'all, like men, like, yeah, you know, yeah, like, it's, it's going to be another athlete. It's going to be another rapper. It's going to be another whatever. Yeah. The one that's going to stick around for us is the one that has emotional maturity, emotional intelligence. I feel like y'all can get that from watching their channel. Get some help. Go to therapy. Yeah. Actually, that's my biggest thing. Go to therapy, man. Go to therapy. Betterhelp.com slash roommates. Link in the description below. Boom. Period. Yes. What is y'all's closing statement to women? Ooh, man. Who want a, a man of y'all's caliber? I think evaluation is important. I think she mm -hmm. has to to really dig deep into the guy life and don't ignore the red flags. You Period. know, if, if he has this, this level where he can't control his emotions, you probably saw something. You probably saw how he treat the waiter. You probably saw who bumped into him by accident. He pushed it back, trying to fight, start a fight. All those things are red flags. So I think women evaluations of certain things and don't ignore the red flags will put you in the front runner. Period. Yeah, and I think for me, the um, the most important thing is to understand what the men that you desire want. That's the Let's biggest snaps. thing. <laughs> that's the that's the big thing. Because like I said, that's what really transformed my life. When I started understanding, okay, the women that I want, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say, well, I think no, I'm gonna ask them. I'm gonna get curious. I'm gonna, you know, listen to the source. So I would really um, um tell women, figure out the man that you want, what does he desire in a woman? And ask yourself, is that me? Period. If that's not you, if you feel like that will make you uncomfortable then maybe it's time to change what you desire in a man and find mm. a man who fits who you are. But if that's who you see yourself being, become the best version of yourself because it only makes sense that if you want the best partner, you also have to be the best partner. And a great book I always recommend to read, Chris is actually reading it, I saw it on your, your bed, your bed um, no. pillow. It's called His Needs, Her Needs by Willard F. Harley Jr. Period. It's a really great book. Talking, teaching men what women desire and also women what men desire. So that's my closing statement. That was great. <laughs> <laughs> so Tati, where can they find you at? Okay, so you guys can find me on YouTube and Instagram and Twitter and TikTok at Tati Coakley, T-A-T-Y-C-O-K-L-E-Y. -E yeah, that's pretty much it right now. Y'all can go get some advice, get some love. Yes. And better yourself, stuff like that. I love it. All right. Thanks no for having me, y'all. Thank you. I enjoy myself. So, so fun. So, Guys, make sure you check out Tati's channel. We really appreciate you guys rocking with her. Send her some love. Do you check your DMs? Yes, of course. Okay, guys. Calm down. Listen. Oh, gosh. <laughs> represent us. Right, Be on your best behavior. You know, show, her, show her some love, guys. My name is Hafiz. Chris is on show, baby. And we are joined by... Tati Coakley. We are the roommates, guys. And have a great day.